it's your girl d Lari, and i'm back with another video so before we get into this video give this video a thumbs up comment down below what y'all think of this video make sure you turn on your post notification so that you you and you lady yes you that's watching this video that's watching me right now about what i'm gonna talk about um make sure you turn on your post notifications so that you could be notified make sure you give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our family channel my name is d Lari. also on this channel is my husband lo um and we are the tony family if you like gossip drama or like girl talk or whatever you can go on over to my other channel it's called the life with d I know I've been saying it wrong and I just kept saying like that is not but what what happened is the person that did my intro put life of D but it's the life with it's life with D that's what it's called life with D I put it down here in a um somewhere over here and then I'll even include it in the description box down below you guys so make sure you go follow us on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram um and I do have Facebook so you can follow us on all social media platforms so today you guys we'll be talking about budget and tips now I know a lot of you are new to you know um, this video um, I have done another video prior way back when but this is a new updated video for you guys and I'm so excited that you all are here because it's a lot of things that I want to show you and teach you my algorithm when it comes to me learning how to budget now budgeting is something that I do on a daily um my it takes my husband to talk about it because at times he is so impatient at times to where I'm like just give me the dollar amount and then I can tell you if it's in our budget or not because that's just how I operate you know so he has to adapt to my ways just as well I have to adapt to his financially so now that we are here um, I am interested in showing you all on how to do a budget now what I did was I went ahead and I did a budget based off a ballpark I wouldn't say a ballpark because this is an actual real budget um, and when it comes to this video, I want you all to take something from it. Now, here's the thing. Budgeting is something that, you know, is to each your own. It's either you can learn it and, or you want to take the time to learn it or you just like, no, my, my method works better for me and that's just that. But me, at, at, at a point, I became to where I just felt like I just didn't know where my money was going. I felt myself living check to check too often. And I didn't want to live like that no more. So, um, what we're going to do today um, is do a budget. And if you have your envelopes, we can do the envelope method as well. Um, and that's how I started off with the envelope method. <laughs> and so, whether you got big or small envelopes, it really don't matter. Envelopes is envelopes to me. Um, but if you want to do this budget you can go ahead and you will need some paper you'll need your envelopes and then um i just give me a pencil about two highlighters a black pen and also a red pen and then if you have it, a note card just in case you need to doodle on the side for whatever reason so <clears throat> i typically go ahead and put budget at the top and black permanent marker i know it's weird but this is my way so if you can adapt to my way great if not um you can go ahead and send me your personal budget i can do it for you i won't disclose the information um but i can go ahead and do it for you and then hopefully that can help you so instead of starting as if we are in the beginning of the year i'm gonna start whereas we are now and if y'all hear noise i do apologize that's my nine-year-old he just don't know how to be cool okay so um if you okay so starting in the beginning of the year won't make sense because we are not in the beginning of the year anymore like meaning we're not in january we're in april so i'm going to start my budget as if it's now because i don't want you all to get confused i'm also going to do a budget as if i'm getting paid every week so if you want a budget where it's every two weeks I can go ahead and get that done for you as well in another video. Just comment down below 
and we can get that um, initiated for you, okay? So first things first, I like to go ahead and write budget at the top of my um, paper. And then this is April. So I'll put April. <clears throat> and I actually have a budget book, you guys. So um, once I do that, I like to go ahead and list all of my bills that is um, important. Now, all bills are important, but you know you have you have your bill that's a priority and then they simmer on down to be between a priority or a necessity or a point, you know? So that's how I do my bills. So first things first, and you always wanna have your calculator too. So first things first would be rent. And then you have car note, insurance, electricity internet and I say internet because nowadays people don't have cable but if you do we can work you out a budget with your cable bill included but this is what we're gonna do today internet and then um, Emergency, savings, gas, credit card. Now I'm only doing it as if it's I'm only doing it as if it's one credit card. If you have more than one, like I said, this is, I don't want y'all to take this budget as if it's a budget that is for you specifically. So when it comes to stuff like this, if you have a specific budget, I can do it for you, but this is just a, um, an example of how my budget and structure works, okay? So I just want to make that clear because I don't want y'all to be in the comments like, d Laurie, I did my budget and it didn't work. Like, wait a minute, sweetie. Let's take your budget in particular plus your income and we can go from there, okay? So then after that, after I put all my uh, bills, after I prioritize my bills, I go ahead and put aside um, another, um, I jot down some more bills which well not bills but i jot down other things that involves my monthly expenses i should call it um i put um groceries i um put household i make sure i always because this is the thing you never want to feel like you working just to work. You wanna work to enjoy your money. So I always put pocket or my account, my personal account is whatever you wanna name it. So pocket money, you know that's for you. And then you always wanna make sure, even though you spending all this money on bills, household, groceries, um, you got money for your pocket and everything, you still wanna make sure you keep yourself up. You know, so hair, nails, brows, whatever it is you gonna get done at this point, with this certain budget, um, the person is only getting their nails and brows done because maybe they got braids or maybe they don't need their hair done because they probably know how to do their hair. So we're going to do nails and brows. Okay. So we have a bunch of things here, right? So then we're on... To the far right of my paper, I put my income. And then I make space. And then at the bottom, I put my goal that I wanna reach. So we're doing a goal for the end of December. Now, the $10,000 goal is something that I started almost two and a half years ago. So the $10,000 goal would be suitable, but 
if we're going to be reasonable, I'd rather do a $5,000 goal because I don't want you all to feel too, um, I don't want you all to feel burnt out. I want it to be reasonable for you starting out because think about it, if this your first time budgeting, the last thing you want to do is overexert yourself. Like, dude, I can't save $10,000 that fast and I'm stressing because I got all these other stuff to pay. Okay, I get it. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with a smaller goal. Because if you can obtain this goal, it will be easier for you to obtain a bigger goal by the end of the year. So we're going to do $5,000 by December. Okay, so $5,000. So our goal is $5,000 by December. Okay, so that's our goal. <clears throat> so... When it comes to budgeting personally, I like to always have a, a midway point because I know that if I hit that midway point, I'm where I'm supposed to be or at least above where I'm supposed to be. For example, if it's April and you got April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, that's eight months. That's including April though, so that's nine months, right? So if I am, at, if I am in April, and um, if I am in April and we're gonna do a halfway mark. So what I'm gonna do is April, write down all the months, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December so that's nine nine is not an even number so my midway would usually be mid July okay so we're gonna do mid July don't forget to put your total because you want to make sure your total is there so you count it every dollar to the penny always remember that always remember it because it's gonna pay off it's gonna you want to make sure you want to make it you want to know where every dollar goes, okay? Every penny, okay? So, <clears throat> this is your total. You're going to make sure you put total in here as well because you want to make sure you know how much everything is. So, um, so we put all the April, May, June, July, August, September. We put April to December. So, April to December is nine months, right? So, our midway is only one, two, three, four months from now. So, we got four months. Between our midway month, our midway mark, and our goal, right? So April will be four. April through July is four. So then we're gonna do um, our midway marks is what what we want to pay attention to when it comes to midway marks is our emergency, our savings, and most importantly, our what? Our goal. We want to make sure that regardless of what, we making sure that those are met, right? <clears throat> so, if your goal is 5,000 by December, what I like to do is take 5,000 the amount, I can use my phone, it's fine. I like to take the amount that I want to hit, divide that by the number of months okay so 5,000 divided by nine months because April to July is I mean April to December is nine so I divide that by nine months that comes to five hundred and fifty five dollars and fifty five cents me personally I don't like I uh, change I don't like uh, money I like the even as possible so I like to round it to the nearest dollar so five 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 point fifty five is five 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 six so we're gonna do five thousand divided by nine equals five five six because it's five 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 but I round it to the nearest okay so you know that your goal once your bills is um, wrote out you know that your goal that needs to be included is gonna be five hundred and fifty six dollars extra so, now what we're going to do, 
is put our income. So this is a weekly budget. I mean, this is a for a person that gets paid weekly, okay? So you get paid four times a month if you get paid weekly. Four times a month. So after taxes, okay, this is after taxes. Say you bring home $800 after taxes. 800, 800, 800, 800, right? 800 after taxes. So 800 times four brings you to the 32, right? Because 32 times four I mean, yeah, 38 times 4 is 32. So it brings you to $3,200 a month. Now, we're not counting no side money, no hustle money. We're not counting none of that. We're counting specifically our checks because regardless of what, we go to work every day and that check, that 40 hours is guaranteed, correct? Okay. So with our rent, our rent nowadays, rent is not cheap. Rent is not, you know, nothing to play with. So rent is 1000 Cardinal Cardinal. It's 220 because we got a good APR rate, so we ain't need to, and we put some down, some money down, plus we had a trade in, so we ain't have to do too much. So, Cardinal 220, our insurance is 180, and that is full coverage insurance. Electricity gonna bring me about 120 a month. Internet bill is $75 because our kids like to run up our bill. And plus, not only that, we got a discount. So $75. And then emergency, you want to put $175 for emergency. Savings, you want to put $200. Gas. Now, depending on what kind of car you got, listen, depending on what kind of car you got and how often you drive. So we're going to do this budget as if this is someone that's working from home. Okay, so if you're working from home, you're not really going to be driving every day. You're going to, if, if anything, you're going to drive throughout, you know, when you get off or, you know, um, on a weekend. So we're going to do um, 100 a month for gas because that's if you leave. I mean, if you don't leave, then it's, you know, and gas went down, thank God, but that's if you leave. And then with credit cards, we only got one credit card. So typically a minimum on a credit card, depending on how much you spent, is $25. So um, if you know, you never want to make the minimum on your credit card. You want to always pay more, but that's another video for another, that's another situation for another video. So um, we're going to do it as if the credit card bill is only $25 a month. Okay? But we got a shopping habit, we shop a lot, and we need that available credit on top of what already, you know, that is available. So we need to make sure we put our money back. So $80 is what we're going to use because the minimum balance is $25, but we're going to put $80 towards it because we want our credit to shoot up. We want a credit increase. We want, you know, to establish more credit. So <clears throat> the $3,200 is what I bring home. Be, so with my rent, which is a thousand dollars, right? Plus two hundred and twenty dollars, which is my um, which is my car note, plus one eighty for insurance. I then have one twenty for electricity. I have seventy five. For my um, internet bill, I got 175 for my emergency account. Now, emergency could be anything, whether that's a car breakdown, or, I don't know, you need to pay your deductible on something, or it, emergency is emergency. You use it for what you need it for, okay? So, 200 for savings, okay? And then 100 for gas, right? And then, 80 for our credit cards. Now you still got groceries, household, pocket money, and your nails and eyebrows, okay? But we before we move forward, if you have the envelopes, what I like to do is write the amount along with the dollar 
to the dollar, to the penny on these envelopes. So, for example, rent a thousand because I know rent gotta be a thousand. You do car note, electricity, so on and so forth. Okay, so 32, so after we added everything up to the credit card, that equals 2150. So over here in red, I'm gonna put 2150. That's still, so I take the 2150, I take 3200 minus 2150. That means I have $1,050 left to use, right? But remember, my goal is 5,000 by December. So 556, so we gonna take out of that $1,050, we gonna take $556 out because we gotta, we gotta hit that goal. So $556 brings me to 494. So one, two, three, four. So what I do is, if my available income every month is guaranteed 3,200, my bills a month is 2,150, and then I still have, that's not including groceries, household, pocket, and nails. What I like to do is, uh, divide the difference, which is 494, between the amount that I need. So groceries, you probably spend about 120 on groceries. Household, you probably spend about 100 on household. So let's do this. So 494, right? Minus, because it's gonna be 20, let me see. 3200 minus 2150 right that 1050 minus 556 brings me to 494 even good so then i take minus that um grocery bill which is 120 minus 100 dollars for a household that leaves me with 274 now we know nails and brows ain't a hundred and some dollars we know that right so nails probably about I mean, nowadays you spend a lot on nails. But I'm basic, I like to just get the regular shellac, overlay, whatever. So nails is gonna run you 45, right? And then your brows, if you're getting them arched or waxed or whatever, that runs you about $10. So 45 and 10, so So that's 55 for your nails and brows. So then we do 274 minus 55. That's gonna bring us to $219. So you could do one or two things. You could put the 219 solely to your pocket or you can take uh-oh. You can take 219 solely to your pocket, or you can give yourself $150 for the month. Now I know it's a tight budget, you guys, but the goal is to be able to save your the goal is to be able to get your five thousand by the end of the month uh year. Okay? So you could take the $219 and just Splurge it, or you know, um, penny pinch off of it to the end of the month, or you can take $150 and then the $69, you can go ahead and you can add it on to another bill if you need it. But in this case, I'm going to put that $219 to myself because this month I did real good, I worked really hard. So $219 is going solely to me, okay? So once you add the 2150, it's easier with my phone, I'm sorry. Once you add the 2150, right, to 120,
So once you add the 2150, <clears throat> this is why I say you might need one of these on the side. So once you add the 2150 to the 556 to all your other miscellaneous bills, you're going to get a total, right? So the total, mind you, your, your main total is the 3200 because that's what you that's what you work for. That's what you bring home guaranteed. So what we're going to do is take I'm just adding up all my bills, y'all. Plus 200, plus 100, plus 80, plus 120, plus 556, plus 100, plus 219, plus 55. That equals 3,200 even. You, you should have 3,200. After all of your bills, rent, car note, insurance, electricity, internet, emergency savings, gas, credit card, groceries, household pocket, nails and brows, all of that should equal to the 3,200, along with your goal. That should equal to the 3,200 even. If it don't, you gotta go back and do something, something ain't right. Now, if it's under 32, you good. If it's over, we gotta, we gotta rearrange something, cause something ain't right. You put an extra dollar or an extra 50 cent or you put extra money somewhere, okay? So remember when I told you guys about the midway mark? So what I like to do, we're gonna do it till July. So one, two, three, four, that's four months, right? So what we're gonna do is take our emergency. So emergency for April. Um, so we're gonna do emergency all down the line for April, right? We're going to times that by four. Then we're going to do savings. And savings is 200. And we're going to times that by four. And then we're going to do our go. And I just put G for go. And that's 556. And we're going to times that by four. Because once again, if we times all of this by four, we know that by July, we should at least have a, at least a stepping stone as to where we wanna be so that way we know we on the right, right track for our goal for the end of the year. So, <clears throat> emergency times four. So our emergency a month is 175. So 175 times four. That's 700. So by July, we should have 700 in our emergency account. 200 times four, that's 800. We should have 800 and then 556 times four is $2,224. Two so by July, I want y'all to check y'all the count for y'all emergency say y'all emergency, y'all savings, and y'all goals. Now, what I like to do is my personal savings is usually my goal account, and then my my um uh, I mean I'm sorry my savings and my personal savings is usually the same thing, and then my emergency account is something totally different. So I'm gonna um break it down to y'all a little bit more in a, another video, but your savings, I mean, your emergency is one thing, savings and gold is pretty much the same thing because if you saving for something, you never wanna combine it with your emergency because what if you, like you just wanna make sure your emergency is always separate. I typically like to have at least two months in advance of rent for emergency purposes, but that's just our preference. I don't wanna, you know, make y'all feel like y'all gotta do it my way, it's just, a strategy of how to do it. So, if you, so it's April, we getting 3,200 a month, you know, and that's the minimum we get in because we work every day. 
we don't miss no days and if we do we got pto to cover for it so we still getting our eight hours um, a day 40 hours a week so with everything that we have um i'm just gonna highlight go with everything that we have rent groceries electric everything that we have we have 3200 now by from april to july in our emergency account we should have 700 dollars in our savings account, we should have $800, and then our goal, we should have $22.24. Now, remember when I divided 5,000 divided by 9, and that equal to 556? The reason I took it by the 9 is because between April and December, that's 9 months. So now, if we are at our midway mark by July, 700, 800, and 224, we know that moving forward, we are on the right track. So what I'm gonna do is take the emergency money, which is the 175, and I'm gonna time that now by five. So August, September, October, November, December, that's five months. So I'm gonna time that by five, right? And then with my savings, I'm gonna time the 200 by five, because five and four is what, nine? Okay, and then with my 556, I'm gonna time that by five right so I'm going to show y'all something so if I have 175 divided by five, I mean 175 times five y'all following me okay 175 times five that's 875 right I'm gonna put it down here then I have 200 times five. That's a thousand. Then I have 556 times five. That's 2780, right? So if I add my emergency, so now I'm gonna add just my emergency money and then I'm gonna add, because I done met my midway. I'm good, I done met my midway mark, so I'm good. So my 550, so my emergency account should equal this by December. 700 plus 875, right? 700 plus 875. That's 1575 by December that you should have. That's the minimum you should have in your emergency account. Now your 800 for your savings is 800 plus a thousand, which is what 1800. That's the least you should have. Now if you've been hustling on the side and you've been putting extra money in your savings, kudos to you, because now you got more than 1800. But that's the minimum you should have. Then you got 224 plus 2780. 200, I mean 2224. I'm sorry, plus 27.80. That gives you 5000 four dollars right and it's only five thousand four dollars because we did 556 instead of 555 dollars 555 dollars and 55 cents so if we would have did the 555.55 i'm just going to do it for y'all who like you know i don't like to do it like that so 555 times 55 times nine it's going to give you 5000 right? You're going to be a penny off, though. I mean, five cent off. But that's why I like to round it to the nearest dollar. So 556 times nine, that give me $5,004. So you know, if you at this by December in three different accounts, you on the right track. So that way, moving to the next year, starting in January, you'll be able to start from all the way from, the, all the way from January to December. And then you will have you'll be able to create a bigger but a uh, goal for yourself along with the bigger um uh, savings account along with the, a bigger emergency fund now i never use emergency under no circumstances unless it's an absolute gap like half like you have no choice but to use emergency okay um this has been something i had to adapt to like i said i became um, found myself in situations to where I had no choice but to figure out another solution because I was living check to check and then 
Um, I found myself in tough financial situations, you know, um, taking out loans or, you know, penny pinching and trying to rob Peter to pay Paul so that way I can make sure me and my family eat. Um, now, I am very thankful and grateful that I don't have to do that because with this budgeting, I promise you it works. Um, I am doing another $10,000 budget um, solely because I like to challenge myself. You know, um, you done came across $20,000, so you want to just keep going up, you know, and you just leave that in your savings account. And that's aside from your emergency and that's aside from your goal. So, um, when it comes to these type of budgets, I just want y'all to, y'all don't have to do it my way, but it's a structure to it. And if you follow the structure, then you will look back and be like, okay, now I want to do a bigger budget. Now I want to do a, a, you know, a, another goal, but that's exceeding my original goal because I know I can meet the 5000 So now let me challenge myself to the 10000 then it's the 15,000, 20,000, and so on and so forth. If you can follow the basics of this, you can take this and, you know, it can open a lot of doors for you, whether that's credit situations. Now, if you are in a situation where you're in debt, I can do a video as far as that too, um, because it's a lot of things that factor into credit. Um, but I'm telling you, it pays off. Now, the only thing I did not add in here that I just realized was phone bill. But once again, if your phone bill is, um, depending on how much your phone bill is, you can take it from your pocket account. And you could, however much your phone bill is, take it from that, and then there you go. Um, because your pocket account is yours, but me, you're an adult, you paying bills, so you really, that's my bro, me, being broke is all the bills paid and I don't got, you know, I don't got no pocket money for that month because maybe I missed a few days of work and my, my budget was a little tight. So I would rather put myself on a back burner than put my bills on a back burner depending on what bills they are because with rent, you can't play with rent. You know, if you like, if you got a cardinal, you can't play with your cardinal because if you miss too many, that's going to affect your credit and it's going to affect you be in repo you know you just don't want to put yourself in bigger situations than what you're already in so if i'm going to eliminate any bill it's going to either start with my nails and brows or my pocket money you know and that's and then we do a domino effect but i hope that this helped y'all i hope that y'all take heed to it because it's really really important to save money and eventually i'm going to teach my children know how to save and you know um duty is very advanced to where um i'd say by next year he'll be ready to go when it comes to learning how to do you know the budgeting thing now i mean he's good at numbers anyway but the fact of the matter is that i hope that y'all took heed to this situation when it comes to budgeting um if y'all interested in me doing a personal budget for you guys comment down below or send us a DM on any of our social media, which it will be in the bottom of this um, video, or simply write us, um, or just let us know once again, hey, Delari, hey, Lo, um, I need help with this budget. Now, Lo, per se, is not going to help you all with your budget, but he will relay it to me like, hey, if somebody needs you to help them with their budget, here's the information. Can you do it for them? And I'll be more than happy to do it for y'all. But um, that wraps up this video, you guys. Once again, I'm Delari. Y'all popping in all that. We are the Tony family. Be sure to go on over to my personal channel, in which it is called The Life of D. Or Life with D, I am so sorry. See, the person that did my intro got me confused. Life with D. Um, and as always, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.